Okay, folks, can continue to uh, enjoy your, your uh, samples there. I'm going to start back in, and I want to start, we're going to start talking about food and fasting, okay, and the relationship between the two. Uh, as I teach fasting, I want to explain a little bit about, uh, uh, there are very different ways to fast. There's a number of different ways to go about it. What I'm going to be teaching you is called day fasting. It's something I've practiced for many years. Uh, I fasted for the first time when I was a teenager. I read about it in the Bible, and I heard other people talking about it, and I thought, well, this is something God wants us to do. I'm going to try this. Okay? And in some ways, it was a good experience. In some ways, well, the second day, I got a headache. <laughs> Okay, so there's things to know about what's happening with your body when you try fasting and why the body reacts as it does. And we'll be talking about some of that. I have to give you a disclaimer. I am not a physician. Okay, I am not a physician. I'm a person who's practiced this and, and studied it to some extent. Uh, but nothing I say here today should override anything that your doctor says. Okay. Don't go home and say, Pastor Ed said do this. The doctor says that. Well, heck with what the doctor says. I'm going to follow the pastor, okay? Listen to your medical doctor, okay? Pay attention to what they're saying. Don't drop your medications, okay? Because you're fasting, okay? Continue to follow those doctor's orders. I want to make sure everybody understood that. So, here we go. We're going to do another brainstorming activity here. And the question now is, why do we eat too much? Why do we do that? Boredom. Boredom. Depression. Depression. Reward. Reward, yeah. I had a colleague when I worked in St. Louis, Sandy, and she had, a little, she had a little sign in her office and it said, you are not a dog, you don't have to give yourself treats. Uh, <laughs> hey, she, let she me was, write that. You want to write that down? <laughs> <laughs> she, she was trying to get that under control in her life and she posted it in her office. <laughs> Other ideas, why, why do we eat too much? What? Socializing. Socializing, very good. Yeah, when you get together, we, that's uh, Audrey mentioned family er earlier. When I'm with my family, we're eating, right? <laughs> that's what we do. Go ahead. I, I don't know what the correct term would be, but I see it on social media and there's a lot of truth to it. A lot of people don't eat right because it is a lot cheaper to eat the cheap mm -hmm. food that's bad for you okay. like the french fries rather than a big healthy salad because it's twice as much and a lot of people can't afford to buy the organic okay. uh, you know, vegetables and fruits and all this that you need and it's cheaper to buy the stuff that's not good for you. You can get a box of instant macaroni and cheese for cents, right? Yeah. It's under a dollar. Yeah. Uh, to, to make the edamame salad that Susan shared with us yeah. you, there's some work and and you've got to go out and find those ingredients and and they're, they, you, they don't come easily to hand yeah. so yes I think and cost I mean, is a factor that is a good reason I mean that is viable yeah a lot of people. That's the reason. yes Sherry some people are addicted mm -hmm. okay Sugar. Sugar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you can't anything that gives you pleasure Anything that gives you pleasure can become an addiction. Even, even fasting. Okay, so you have to be careful because you, you get into that mode, you're losing the weight, you're feeling better. As a consequence of that, you're feeling good about yourself and there are people who go too far. Okay, so anything that gives you pleasure can become a, an addiction, a habit and addiction that's dangerous. Okay, good to be aware of that. Yeah. When you eat out, they always give you a huge portion. Portion size. And I've been taught that you need what's in front of you. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, blame it on your mother, right? <laughs> oh, my. 
No, we're going to talk about restaurant strategy. Okay. China. Yeah, there's some, yeah, kids are starving in China. Right. We're, <laughs> we're going to talk about restaurant strategy. Okay. Because I'm not going to tell you to stop going to the restaurant with your family or friends. But we're going to talk about how to handle that situation, how to deal with it in a more effective way. Okay. Um, other, any other thoughts on this brainstorming? Why do we eat too much? Okay. Well, let's, let's move on. Um, what I'm going to teach you is called day fasting. And, and here's a day fasting pattern. Uh, it's, it's a practice designed uh, to keep me functional through a fast. And notice when I described the early Christian practice how they were skipping a day, right? They would fast on Wednesdays and Fridays, sort of a thing. Until the Middle Ages came along, and then they were doing back-to-back, -back, right? Friday and Saturday. But to the earliest Christians didn't do that. They were skipping a day. And they likely did this to extend their fast. And when you're fasting, you can experience a reduction in your energy. Okay? You can feel less strong. Chad's bobbing his head over here. I'll tell you this. Uh, Chad and Mike and I went on this 40-day journey of Lent together fasting. And so I'm going to have them talk a little bit about their experience with that. But uh, when Chad, you, when I said you can feel a reduction in energy, you started bobbing your head. Yeah. Uh, here's why that happens. In modern life, we get most of our calories from carbohydrates. That's where most of our calories come from. And our bodies are trained. Okay, to eat a carbohydrate and it goes right into the energy that you need to move around for the day. Okay, so I get up in the morning, pour myself a bowl of cereal, sugar frosted flakes. Okay, woohoo! Okay, talk about sugar high. Okay, corn, they're made with corn flakes. Corn's a little bit higher than some other grains. And then there's, they, they frost the stuff, <laughs> right? Um, we're going to talk about glycemic index in a little while, what that is and, and uh, how that affects us as well. But our bodies are trained to crave this. You crave your carbs and your body wants to burn carbs. When you start to fast, here's what's going to happen. Your body's going to say, this isn't what we do. <laughs> This isn't how we behave. I don't like this. Where's, where's my frosted flakes? Okay, or my Wheaties or you know, whatever uh, carb grain it is, it's gonna miss that and it's gonna remind you of that. <laughs> okay, but if you wanna get healthier, okay, in the physical aspect of fasting, you've gotta break that relationship because here's what happens. As you fast, your body learns, oh, I've got energy. I've got energy. I'm carrying all kinds of energy. It's called fat. <laughs> and your body learns to turn to that as its energy source. And it starts to forget about the carbs. Okay? That's one of the things that will happen in your body as you fast. You'll start to, to, to be more comfortable with it. As you learn, um, as you learn, as your body learns to draw on its fat rather than its weight for those carbs. So day fasting. So what I've been doing, um, what I did in the season of Lent was this: I fasted three times a week, and then the other days I ate more regular. Now let me give you a chart so you can see this. So we're going to affect our calories in three different ways. There's the fast, which is essentially this. You're going to skip a meal. In my case, I'm skipping lunch. Okay? And the other thing I'm leaving off are snacks, right? Which are almost always carbs, right? Almost always when we reach for snacks unless you like uh, those, uh, those meat sticks, 
right? That is Pastor, meat. Pastor, when you say skip lunch, are you saying skip it altogether, literally, or are you saying eat something like these products? What I do is I eat a healthy breakfast, and then at lunchtime, instead of eating, I get out my Bible, and I spend time reading the scriptures and praying, or I might sing. There's a hymn verse I gave you up here. O Lord, throughout these forty days, you prayed and kept the fast. Inspire repentance for our sin and free us from our past. So I would substitute, instead of the noon meal, I would substitute devotion. Spend time in prayer, singing. Uh, there's other things you could do. Take a walk instead of sitting at your desk and thinking about how hungry you are. Okay? Because <laughs> that's what the body will want to do. Okay? So I actually skip lunch and I don't eat snacks on those fasting days. The other thing I do is uh, calorie reduction. And this is something that you're going to need to research. Okay? And I've given you information in the booklet to find this information. Every one of us has a baseline of calories that the body needs to sustain itself. In my case, the, the, the information tells me I need 2,600 calories per day just to stay where I am in weight. 2,600 calories. If I want to lose weight, I've got to somehow have less calories. Okay? And I do that by the fast. Okay, where I'm leaving things off that commonly I would eat. I also do my calorie counting. We're going we're gonna to talk about labels and calorie counting and things like that here in a minute. And then the other thing that I do is I exercise. The E word. The E word, right. Now, who said they like to ride bike? Okay, there's some bike riders out there. There's some walkers. There's some, I, I'm a runner. I, I run, is what I do. Um, sometimes folks will, will take this on and they'll, they'll try to control their weight through exercise. And it doesn't work. <laughs> okay, let me tell you why. Uh, how many calories do you burn if you walk a mile? About 100. Some of you have done your research. That is exactly right. If you're running, it's going to be a little bit more. But think about that. Think about that. That that little bowl that you had with the with the barley and some fruit in it. There's enough energy there to take you a mile or more. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? The body can do incredible things with that amount of food. But this is why exercise alone does not work as a dieting strategy. I run, when I run right now, I run about five miles. So I'm burning 100 or 500 plus calories. But if I wasn't doing calorie reduction or fasting in some way, my weight would probably stay the same. That's how it was before Lent. Okay? I wasn't fasting. I was just living my life. I'd go out and run. Chad and I were running together. We'd hit the streets and we'd go out there and we'd run. And that burns off some calories, but not nearly enough to bring your weight down. Okay, Pastor, if you skip lunch and come supper time, are you going to devour the food? I mean, you're. What do you do? I've got some strategies for you. Okay, because you're you're going to feel that. You're going to feel hunger. Um. So, uh, so anyway, these, these, a combination of these is what will work for getting your weight under control. A combination of these. Um, let's talk about the food groups. We're going to come back to your question. I'm, I'm going to try to be as practical as possible on this stuff. But uh, what are the food groups? Dairy. Dairy? Somebody say meat. meat, meat, protein. Somebody said vegetables. The V word. Oh, grains. 
Grains, fat, and uh, I would I would put alongside of that things like oils, like olive oil, vegetable oil, fruit. Okay, that we we could talk about things we drink, but they they all be related to that. There's one. Well, there's two things I'll add. And uh, they could go along some, aside some of these others. It depends on how people break things out. I'm gonna add nuts, um, nuts and seeds. And um, the last one is the first one we think of. Confections. That's your sugar, okay? <laughs> That's the sweet stuff that we all enjoy and get drawn to. Um, look in your booklet there, you see a plate. And this is, this is information put out by our government. Uh, uh, the illustration comes from a place called My Plate on the government website. And they're trying to teach us about what a balanced diet is. So upper left hand corner, write this in, fruits. Okay, it's a little bit smaller box, fruits. Below that, we're talking about the left-hand side of your plate. Below that, right in vegetables. Under, right under fruit. Underneath fruit. Yeah, there's the other box. And you see how big that box is for vegetables. Okay, go across your plate to the right-hand side. And there's another bigger box. And they put grains there. Grains. And then below that is <laughs> no. <laughs> that's that's your meats, and that circle off to the side. You can probably guess what that is. That's that's a dairy. That's dairy. That's dairy. We'll get to that. <laughs> We'll get to that. After yeah. 40 days. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna draw that diagram up here so I can talk about it a little bit. So there's there's our areas: fruit, vegetable, grain, uh, protein, or I'll put an M meat and D there for dairy. Uh, we're going to look at some charts of what I was actually eating on some days and uh, during Lent. So you can see what I, I put down what I was eating. <laughs> so you can see it. Um, when, when I'm looking to reduce my calories, okay, here's the places I cut calories out. I cut out grains. Okay, I cut back on the grains. Cut back on the meat that I'm eating. And I cut back on the dairy. What I have what have I not touched? Fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables. Okay? Uh, those those are the ones your body was made to eat fruits and vegetables. It really was. Okay? What is it that God tells Adam and Eve to reach for in the Garden of Eden? Fruit of the trees. Fruit of the trees. Okay? He made us to eat this stuff. But it's not the first thing we want to reach for, is it? It's not the first thing we want. Um, so when you're thinking about calorie reduction, think about this. Think about, even dot in those lines on your chart. Remember, grains, meats, and dairy are good places to do some drawdown for your calorie reduction, okay? And uh, I'll tell you this, you can eat as many vegetables as you want. Eat as many as you want. Potatoes? No. <laughs> <laughs> Pota potatoes are more like this. Potatoes are more like the grains, okay? We're going to talk about glycemic index and what potatoes do in your body, okay? 
Does that include sweet potatoes too? Uh, sweet potatoes are a little bit different. They're not quite the same as the white potatoes. Uh, it depends on how you cook them, actually. And I would encourage you to, to look into that uh, because you get different results depending on how you cook. Okay? Tur turn over the page. Here I'm, uh, I'm uh, revealing myself to you. <laughs> this is what I, these are three examples of things that I ate during my Lenten fast. You can see exactly what I was doing. Where's the S word? Where's, what's the S word? Yeah, I don't see any S words on there. S? Snacks? The, the, the snacks I ate were things like, you see where it says snow peas in the middle column there? Snow peas. Cauliflower chips and hummus. We're going to try some of that here in a little bit. Okay. Uh, you see, I, I ate dark chocolate chips. Dark chocolate can be healthy for you if you don't eat too much. Okay. So, so I... I ate a, I, you see, I ate a variety of things. Okay. What's, what meat am I eating, though, in here? Fish. Poultry and fish. fish. Poultry and fish. Okay. Fewer calories, less fat, healthier for you. You're not saying fried fish here, either. There, this is not well. I take it back. Really? I do fry fish. Here's how I do it. I put just enough butter, I use butter, in the pan to get the pan greased, and then I put my fish in. I don't bread it. I take uh, herbs or spices, I sprinkle it on it, turn it over, do the other side, and so it's, it's basically a little bit of butter on my fish with herbs and spices, and that's what I eat. The, the trouble comes in is when you put all that heavy breading on the fish. Okay? Same Th thing, thing, fried chicken. Chicken, pretty healthy meat. Pretty healthy to eat. But when you deep fry it, or, or Kentucky fry it, or whatever you do to it, you shoot the calories in that thing through the roof. Okay? So... So, so you, you can see there what I was doing. What about the portion control? You say oatmeal, but how much oatmeal is that? I, I would take a quarter cup of dried oatmeal. I'd prepare that in the microwave, and then I'd add uh, half of a piece of a fruit to it. Okay, like the fruits we had up here. So one morning I'd have it with mango. The next morning I'd have it with pears. The next morning I'd have it with apple and that gave you some variety so that you could enjoy that grain um but uh but a quarter cup is enough what about raisins everybody says stay away from raisins the raisins have high sugar content in them there's a lot of calories in a raisin now if if you if you use a modest amount of raisins put raisin look just a few raisins and cinnamon into your oatmeal then you're not going to blow your your calorie reduction. So reduction, reduction if you use the see-through or the whatever they call it. What's it? What's yellow. Yellow, yellow. The yellow raisins. I don't know anything about yellow raisins uh, sure calories. I don't know. It's just, it's just that's just white grapes, isn't it? Green grapes. This, this is something I would encourage you to do. Um, what I would do is I, I have on my I have on my phone this little notebook and I open it up and I started a page in there called Calories Today and every time I ate something I would I would type in what it was and how many calories I ate of it. Count your calories. Count your calories. If you're serious about losing your weight, slow down. Okay, this is the mindfulness thing. Slow down and count your calories. And you'll be surprised what you learn. <laughs> you'll be surprised what you learn when you slow down and you think about it and you count your calories. 
So here, it was a Tuesday. I had steel cut oats, 75 calories, uh, an apple, 95 calories, turkey sausage, 110 calories. Did I leave meat out of my diet? No, no but I switched. I didn't eat pork sausage. I went to turkey sausage, fewer calories, and you can find some good tasting turkey sausage out there. Yeah. Do you have to use steel cut oats or can you use instant oats? Good, good question, They're Sandy. Not in the packet with all the stuff in it, but just plain old instant oats. Yeah. So here is something to know about your grains. Write these. Write these down. Oh, I see. Okay, I did Wheat flour, Sandy's potatoes. <laughs> that's that's your white potatoes. Um, instant oats, or anything instant, any grain that they're that they're doing instant on. Be aware of it. Um, what am I leaving off here? Uh, wheat flour, think bread. Pasta, but there's an interesting twist on pasta we'll talk about. Am I leaving something off, Susan? I don't know. You don't know, okay. <laughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna talk about what's called glycemic index. And what happens in our bodies? Well, on your chart, it would be white rice. Yeah. Oh, white rice, thank you. Yeah, and, and but brown rice isn't far below it, okay? These are all what they call starches or carbs, okay? And the way that, what they do in your body is different from something like fruits and vegetables, okay? Here's what happens. So I, I sit down and I, I eat my boiled potatoes. Mom made boiled potatoes for supper, like every night. I had boiled potatoes growing up as a kid. But this is what it does in your body. Your blood sugar goes like this, and then your blood sugar goes like that. And, and potatoes are high up there to do this to you. Uh, on the glycemic index, when you're talking about the values, Pure, pure glucose is 100. Your boiled potatoes are in the 70s, and so are all these other things I've put up here, except the pasta. We're gonna talk about pasta, okay? These are things I would encourage you to avoid when you're fasting, because when you eat them, your, your blood sugar is gonna spike, and then you're gonna drop, and when it drops, guess what you're gonna do? I need to get energy and you start reaching for some more of those carbs. That's how the carbs get you. It's the, it's the blood sugar drop that gets you. Because you feel weak, I need, I, need, I need to feel strong. And you reach for those carbs. The barley that Susan made for us, here's what it does in the body. It's low, with what they call low glycemic. Barley is, these are in the 70s, barley is a 28. It just, it lifts your blood sugar up a little bit and then it burns slow through your body. You'll have sustained energy if you're eating something like the barley. Steel cut oats, a little higher on glycemic, but it'll, it does a similar thing. I think it's a 42, okay? Instant oats, though, Sandy. I see that. It's it's like eating the the, the, the it's like eating the potatoes. It'll shoot you right up. Uh, this surprised me and severely disappointed me. The one that's the worst, and this is worse than pure glucose. Baked potato. Oh, oh. everything's in there. Oh my word. The glycemic level on a baked potato is 111. It will t it'll, it, you, will, you eat a baked potato and you'll feel like you're, woo! It will feel great. It feels great, doesn't it? And then comes the crash. And then comes the crash. 
how come is a baked potato worse than just a regular potato? It's the way it's cooked. It's the thoroughness of the cooking. It prepares the, the starch in there for your body to pick it right up. Okay. And it doesn't matter how you bake or cook that baked potato. Well, it, you're baking it. <laughs> to make it in the microwave and it's... It, it, it's it's still the, the more thoroughly cooked that is the more it's going to zip right into your bloodstream okay. uh, if you if you sandy if you ate a raw potato it would be kind of down in the middle level oh, really? okay. yeah if you eat them raw but who wants to eat a raw potato right <laughs> don't be pointing fingers over there i see that <laughs> so so we're, we're talking about being mindful about what we're eating. Watch out for uh, potato chips, crackers, anything made with, with the wheat flour, okay? Uh, anything made with rice. Rice cakes, you remember when rice cakes came out and oh, this oh, yeah. is the diet food and all of this stuff? Yeah. Shoots your blood sugar through the roof, okay? Not a good choice. <laughs> And they taste bad too. <laughs> They're not fun to eat. <laughs> so, so, so this is we watch our grains, and you try to substitute fruits and vegetables. Okay, substitute those fruits and vegetables. And like I said, you can eat as many vegetables as you want. Okay, snow peas. Just sit down and eat on those. All right. Are edamame pretty low too? Ed edamame is it's a soybean, right? It's a yeah, green yeah. soybean. It's a soybean, so you can use it in place of your meat. You know, it has protein in it. Protein. Oh, that's right. I, I what was your question? I don't. I don't have that package with me. But what was your question? Whether it was low calorie or low. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh, calorie, calorie, calorie. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, it's, it's lower. It's lower. It's lower. <laughs> so any any vegetable that has seeds in it, <clears throat> like peas, green beans, the edamame would be the same way. Uh, they're going to be a little bit higher in calories, but they're nothing like eating a starch. Nothing like it. Okay. Um, any vegetable that is a root like your carrots, your beets, they're gonna be a little bit higher in calories, but they're nothing like eating the grains or anything that's gonna carry fat like beef and pork, okay? <laughs> it's nothing like, uh, Susie's crying back here. <laughs> Have you ever tried no, this pork? <laughs> yeah, stop making the pork. Stop making the pork? Okay, I gotta show you this now. Where, Susan, where'd you put this? Oh, it's over here. Meat portion. Meat portion. A serving of meat is the size of a deck of cards. Not the, the sight saver cards, okay? The great big ones, okay? <laughs> it's about this size, or if you don't have your cards with you, take out a reasonably sized cell phone, not, a, not an iPad, okay? <laughs> And that will give you a visual sense of what a meat portion should be. The portions you're getting in your restaurant eating are crazy, crazy high. Okay. On my, on my, on my fast days during Lent, I was eating around a thousand to twelve hundred calories. I'd go to the restaurant and I'd open up the menu, the ones that put in calories for you. Most of the stuff on the menu would be like 1,400 calories. It would be my entire day's meal and more in one setting. It's that bad. Now, let's talk about restaurants. What do you do? <laughs> How do you manage this restaurant issue? Here's what I decided I would do and it worked for me. I'd go in and uh, the first thing I'd look for on the menu was soups and salads, okay? They tend to be, from what I've observed, lower in calories. They tend to be. Although if you get potato soup, 
With all that cheese in it, right? <laughs> Susan makes a mean potato soup, by the way. But uh, uh, if, you, if you get that, you're going to probably have higher calories. I, I, it's surprising how different the soups can be. But look, look first at soups and salads. Here's the other thing I did. I'd order what I wanted, and I would only eat half of it. And I'd take the rest home. Okay, so if they brought me out five chicken wings, I ate three. No, <laughs> I'd, I'd eat half of what they brought me, and then I'd just take the rest home, and that would be another meal. Okay, um, what are you going to order to drink? Water. 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 They charge you way too much for the soda anyway, right? Right. You're paying two or three dollars for soda, and it's calories you do not need. Mm -hmm. Get water. If you're if you're wanting a little flavor in it, ask for lemon. They'll bring it to you. They always do. Okay? Or lemon juice or something like that. Okay. You know, another thing, we, my husband and I have done it, you know, maybe a nicer restaurant, you know. They, they seem pretty kind about splitting your portion, too. I mean... Oh, sure. And sh uh, having it as a couple. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it assumes though that you want the same thing. Say it again. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> easy. You can tell that. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. You asked Ford. I I've skipped lunch. I've not eaten any snacks, and I come home, and Carol's going like this because you're fighting your way into the house to get the to get that evening meal. <laughs> here's how to here's how to ease your way into that meal so that you don't go crazy okay when I'm fasting I try always to eat vegetables first so I will have a serving of snow peas I'll have a serving of carrots uh, green beans something and it's usually raw and I'll sit down and I'll eat those first and I'll wait half an hour Here's what happens in your body. The vegetables have a lot of fiber in them. And that fiber goes into your body. It takes about 20 minutes for your stomach to go, wait a minute, I've been fed. About 20 minutes. And you eat those vegetables and you wait a half an hour and it starts to subside your hunger. So that when you get to the dinner table, you're getting reasonable portions. So prioritize fiber. Prioritize fiber. Here's another strategy. Eat more for breakfast. Don't just eat a bowl of cereal. Even, even barley. Even that nice barley. Don't just eat that. Have turkey sausage. Eggs. Don't do it every day. But eat more for breakfast and you'll find you're not as hungry later in the day. It'll help you. It'll help you through. Okay? There's a couple practical strategies for your fast day. Um, I've, I've listed down there some of the vegetable things there for you. Uh, prioritize fiber. That's a physical principle there that's right after those vegetables. I'd write that down. That you're also prioritizing your vitamins and minerals. Okay? What your body has to have to function. Uh, you see the chart there about glycemic index. I've thrown a number of things on there. Uh, pasta is the big outlier. You think pasta is like any other bread, but it's not quite. It's more of a mid-range on glycemic. Okay, we found egg noodles were lower in calories than other types of bread. We thought that we were amazed. We didn't imagine that would be the case. Uh, but so long as you're minding your, minding your portions, Okay, Susan has laid out all these different items out here so you can explore a little bit, look at the, the portion sizes that's on there. Take those to heart. Take those to heart. They will guide you into eating less. We start studying those portion sizes. Um, and that's part of the mindfulness, right? I'm going to count my calories. I'm going to look at my portion sizes. And I, that keeps you from going... To extremes. Uh, substitute your low 
glycemic carbs or with low glycemic carbs. So I don't eat my white rice. Uh, I eat something that uh, is going to be more like barley or oats, um, not instant oats. They have cauliflower rice now. Yeah, they have cauliflower rice now. They're, they're doing some wonderful things with cauliflower. I went to, a, I don't know what restaurant it was the other day. It wasn't Chipotle's. I, I ordered, oh, it was planks up here on high. And I looked over their menu and I thought, eh. <laughs> I don't know if I should eat any of this. And I ended up choosing a buffalo, buffalo cauliflower. Okay, the bread part of it was probably more calories than I needed, but it was cauliflower. It was a vegetable I was eating. And Susan's got some dips here. We're gonna try in just a minute. Let me rush through the last of the things I was gonna say here. And then I'm gonna ask Chad to speak for just a minute. Uh, notice on the bottom of page 10, I put down 100 calorie sustaining snacks. So on the one side, a medium glycemic is uh, apples, dried apricots, pears, bananas, things like that. You can take that to work with you. If you can't keep yourself from eating something, eat that piece of fruit and it'll, it'll sustain you. You'll run a, you can run a mile after eating an apple, okay? <laughs> There's enough energy there. To do that, you think everybody in this room? Can run a mile? I think they can. I'm, <laughs> I'm optimistic. Um, and then, but look at the nuts. Nuts are extremely low glycemic. They won't spike your blood sugar. Okay, even the even the the highest glycemic nut, which is a cashew, is a, is a 32 on the glycemic index. It's that low. Okay, so those are safe things to eat for snacks. What about walnuts? Because they're supposed to be so good for your heart. Walnuts are good. The thing to remember about nuts is portion control. Because nuts are high in fats. Okay, there's a lot of energy. Notice the sizes I'm giving there. I'm giving you actual counts. Uh, you eat 11 cashews, and that's 100 calories. All right, you go to the ballpark and you order peanuts, right? You get a big bag of peanuts, you eat that whole bag of peanuts, it is hundreds of calories. Hundreds of calories. Mind your portion sizes. Mind your portion sizes. That's key. And that'll, those, but those two things, fruits and nuts, are going to give you sustainable energy. I'm going to ask Chad for just a minute to talk. Chad, Chad has uh, type 2 diabetes. Is that correct, Chad? Yeah. And he's been fasting and been doing it successfully. Talk a little bit about your experience, Chad. <clears throat> Said on the fasting days, Tuesday, we did Tuesday, Thursday, and, and Saturday. Saturdays. Yeah. I did the reduced calorie between. I think I went to the extreme between 500 and 800. Okay, that that was. I estimate that. That's pretty low. That's pretty low. And you feel <laughs> drained. You feel hangry, is what I call it. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good. But to stave off the cravings, I did do black coffee, like mm -hmm. one cup during lunch at work. Yes. With a little bit of uh, real butter. Mm hmm. Because you could put that in it, uh, helped you sustain your energy. Okay. Throughout the day. And uh, I did bone broth. I would take that to work and heat it up. Well, probably not healthy to heat it up in the microwave, but that's <laughs> that staved off some of the hunger cravings. Okay. And I would buy the dark chocolate, mm -hmm. and you get a little, little squares in the bag for about three or four dollars, and you can be on that for days. You can carry that. I took one of those. Yeah, you you were using portion control though, right? You were eating small amounts. Yeah, one or two, two of the little bars. There you go. Or even a half of a diabetic shake. Okay. And my A1C went from eleven to eight. My sugars were ranging from the four in the four hundreds to five hundreds. It went down to the two twenty range. <clears throat> so this is this is the power of the fasting, the benefit of the fasting. You if you're if you're diabetic like Chad, you have to manage that, right? You've got to be careful that you don't crash your blood sugar because you're gonna feel like 
crap and you might treat other people that way. <laughs> that that hang, hangry, I think you said, right? You have to be careful of that. Um, but you look for those low glycemic index foods, things like those, those nuts, or you're eating dark chocolate, uh, some different things like that, that uh, aren't gonna spike you so bad. Milk chocolate will go woo, right? I, I did go to Wendy's one day. Uh oh, here we go. <laughs> Fashion. I had, I had Dave's double, but I cut it in half with no bun. Okay. You get the hamburger at Wendy's with no bun, and you cut it like half of it and eat it that way. Okay. So you were eating basically beef and vegetables that way? Yeah. Yeah. Well, a little bit of cheese on there. A little bit of cheese. Okay. Because cheese yeah. doesn't break the uh, uh, ketosis mode. Okay. You eat a little bit of it. little bit of it. Yeah, cheeses that I like, and I use this in uh, uh, my secret weapon in fasting. I put a whole chart in there about this is soup. Because if you eat a can of this soup for supper, you get two bowls out of it. You will feel full. <laughs> That's the wonderful thing about soup. And if you're, if you're watching, if you're minding your labels, they're lower in calories. The one thing you've got to watch is salt. And I put a chart in there, arranged it by the salt content. Because some of them, they will slip so much salt into the soup that it's not healthy for you. But uh, if you eat a can of this soup, you will feel full. You will feel full. And the cheese I use, because I, I like to put a little cheese in my soup. <laughs> Uh, grated Parmesan, about 20 calories in two tablespoons, or I put in a little bit of ricotta, okay, which makes it creamy. That's more like 40 calories in two tablespoons. But just if you're minding your portion sizes, you can get the flavor without getting all of those calories, okay? But it's all about checking those labels. Doing it's a, it's it's addition and, sub, and sub, addition and subtraction, folks. That's all it is. It's easy math, okay, to see and get that control over your diet. I got to show you this because Susan has been bringing these home. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then we'll take a break. Uh, dark chocolate Oreos. I don't even know why they made the ones with the white stuff in it. I mean, come on. <laughs> These are very delicious. If I run my five miles, I had that up here a minute ago. If I run my five miles and eat just four cookies, I cancel out my entire exercise. Just four cookies. And heaven knows... If I got the TV on and I'm watching something that I'm enjoying and I'm not being mindful, I can eat, eat, eat one of the sides of this, right? <laughs> I can do it. <laughs> uh, one other I'll show you over here. If you need a cookie. Animal crackers. Chocolate animal crackers. Okay, not as much calories, not as much sugar. Okay. Look at the portion sizes, though, right? 14. Don't go crazy. Don't go crazy. Uh, Fig Newtons are, are a nice thing. They're fruit. Um, but a portion size is how many cookies, Susan? Two. Two cookies. Two Fig Newtons. Right? But some of us can eat, eat half the package, right? One sitting. Okay? That's an incredible amount of calories. Because it's like eating raisins. It's like eating raisins. They're high calorie. Um, take a moment take a moment uh, Susan's going to get some other uh, things to taste some snacky type stuff out take a moment at the end of page 11 and write down a physical goal for your fast if you're going to fast write down a physical goal and you might, you might write down and say uh, I'm going to I'm going to reduce my calories, but you need you, to do that. You need to know your baseline. You need to know your baseline, and I don't recommend going under a thousand calories in a day because you're going to feel weak. You're going to you're you're not going to be able to carry on your job the way you want. 
okay? Um, so that's something to be careful of. I'll tell you a story while you're writing. I, uh, when I, this is something that happens when you fast. The first few days are a little bit harder. And then your body starts to adjust. And you reach a point where the, the strong cravings that you were having disappear. And this happened to me um, early in the, the Lenten fast. I ate breakfast. I skipped lunch. I had my prayers at lunch. I got to evening. I didn't feel like eating. I didn't feel like it, and I didn't. And then I got up the next morning. It was going to be breakfast. I had my coffee. I still didn't feel like eating. And I didn't. And then I went out for my run. <laughs> and I decided, you know, I'm feeling good. I, I've been running three miles. I'm going to go to four. And by the time I got to that fourth mile, this is what the marathoners called bonking. Okay. You've burned up all of the glycogen that your body has stored. That's the instant energy, that carb type energy. You've burned all of that up. The fast has done that to me. And then your body has to run strictly off of the fat. And my body wasn't ready for it. And I felt weak as a kitten, weak as a wet kitten. And I, I had to stop and I had to walk for a while and then finished out my run. And then I said to myself, I'm not going to do that again. Even if I don't feel like eating something to eat in the evening, I'm going to have something to eat. So what I, what I want to ex tell you is don't do anything extreme. Don't be extreme. Okay? Do your numbers. Manage those calories intake. Do a little more exercise. Find something good to do. But don't do anything extreme and you'll be amazed at how your body will respond and adjust. It will. Okay? Let's take a break. Um, have a Susan's going to say something. Okay, we're going to have some vegetables and dips and I think everybody knows how easy it is to get a veggie tray and put the ranch dressing. Oh yeah. This is a price. So I, I looked into these uh, three products. Regular ranch dressing is, this is all for two tablespoon serving, 130 calories. Light Ranch is 80 calories. And then we found this tzatziki. 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 Greek yogurt dip. Yeah. 25 calories. So th that's the sort of thing you want to look for. Substitution. And you still get two tablespoons. And it tastes pretty much the same. And, um, I've got some over here. Well, you guys can try it. Uh, I just had a good question. Was um, do I eat at the same time each day when I'm doing my day fasting? And the answer is yes. Sure. And here's the kind of schedule I'm on. It wouldn't work for all of you depending on your job and those kinds of things. Uh, when I'm fasting, I'm often up early. So I'll wake up at like five. And I'll get up and I'll have my coffee and I'll have my oats or barley with, with some fruit. And, uh, and uh, depending on what I'm doing that day, I might, I might make myself some eggs and turkey sausage or something like that. And then I don't eat and it's about a 12 hour duration. And then I eat again and start eating again in the evening. And here's, this is, a, I found is key for me, may not be, may be different for you. For me, this was key. I go to bed early. I go to bed early because you know what? If you're in bed, you're probably not eating. <laughs> if you are, your spouse is gonna swack, whack you, right? <laughs> so that's a practice I would encourage. Go to bed early if you're fasting and that helps take away that temptation. And then you wake up in the morning and you're ready to eat a bigger breakfast, which is gonna get you better through the day, okay? And you get into a good pattern that way, and it helps. Susan's got food for us.
Say again? What do you call early? Uh, if I'm getting up at 5, I might be in bed by 8 or 9. Yeah. Of course, I may have also run 5 miles. Oh, okay. So, so I fall asleep. 